what we've got in here, pretty cool if you ask me. So that's done. So I'm back out here again. It's been about two months. My hands are finally better. But to be sure, I don't get in the same state again. I'm using gloves for anything like woodwork. Um, if I was to ever work with clay again, I'd use different gloves than these, but I'd make sure I was wearing gloves. Got this bad boy. This vintage Polish canvas Lavu tent from the 1970s, it's 1976. It's got a tag on it still from when it was produced. So I'll show you that in a bit, but I'm just coming out here to test out the tent. You might be able to hear a road, but I'm back in England at the moment. I haven't got the luxury of being in Scotland where it's illegal. So I've had to come out in the daytime, quickly prop up the tent, see what it's like. It's my first time trying it. I've had it about a month now, but it's the first opportunity I've had to use it. And it smells old, I'll tell you that. Right, so we'll start with these, if we can get it open. It's buttons, buttons are a nightmare for me. Okay, so, what we've got in here, so what it looks like to me is these are the poles and they all just bend together here. There's the two pouches of them. So I'm reckoning when these are all folded together, it will be the middle central pole of the tent and then inside of both of these they've even given some metal pegs as well they're a bit difficult to get out so i won't do it on camera but yeah that's uh, that's the middle pole and the pegs as well so they give me everything i've needed but let's get to the, the star of the show here so what i've done if i'm correct is it's the one on the bottom okay so you can tell this one's been used a bit more. You can already see some marking on it. If I unfold this, what's great about it as well is it's actually a poncho. Both halves of it are their own poncho. So yep, yeah, there's buttons all over it. Just unfold it here. Little bits for the arms. And like I say, this is the best part here. Okay, so I've got to be careful with this, but this is so old. I don't know if you can see the writing, I might zoom it in. But it's all in Polish here. You can see it was produced in 1976 in November. Pretty cool if you ask me. The thing is though, it's only, it's on this button here and I really don't want to ruin this. I, I don't have any sort of laminator at home. So what I might do is after propping this tent up for the first time, I'll actually take it off. Seems like a bit of a sin to take it off the original thing, but I can put it back on at any point and it will preserve it from getting ruined if I ever wanted to, you know, give it anyone else in the future. It's, it's gone through a lot already and I wouldn't want to see this original tag ruined at all in any shape or form. But yeah, if uh, if anyone's Polish out there, you can you can tell me what this says because I haven't actually translated it yet. So it'd be cool if you could tell me. But yeah, there's the two parts of it, the buttons all over it, so you can button it together, the two halves, and I'm going to prop it up in like a triangle formation today, and put that central pole going straight up into this in the center. Here it is, here's the little, just trying to find that. There's a little pouch here for putting the pole up like that. But yeah, that is just amazing. My parents got me this as a gift for my birthday. Let's get to propping it off. So I've just turned this on the outside side and you can tell the people who were using it were definitely using this half of the poncho primarily. And I don't know if you can see on the camera if it picks it out well, but this has got stamps all over it from, um, I'm guessing, just where it's been, which is amazing. It seems military. From what I can see here, it's very, very faded. But on, on this one here, 
it actually has the stamp 1976 exactly like the tag on the inside so this is legit it's been through it and you can you can tell that on it but even though it's so old it's got another good 30 40 years in it still it's amazing this material just seems like it does the job you know every tent I've used in the past has been really thin plastic rubbish but this canvas stuff it seems like it's gonna keep me warm and keep me dry the best things that you can have out of a tent I'm gonna put this bad boy up now. And today, if I get the time, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a foldable chair. I don't have a lot of paracord, and uh, so if I've watched enough Swedwoods, I have a bit of a clue what I'm doing. But like I said, everything's experimental. First of all, I'm gonna crack these open set that up, set the centre pole up and then I'm going to put the two halves together and see what I can do, we'll go from there. I'm going to have to see how to do it, it looks like this one, it's got a wide bit of black on the top so this will either go at the top or the bottom. Now like I say, I've got, I can get them out. Ugh. Got all the pegs there. Oh, they're like a witch's fingers. Keep them right in front of me. At least they're not wooden stakes so I can see them. So. I'm just trying to make sure I'm in camera shot the whole time as well. Alright, so we just found out that it is tall enough. I'll show you why. If I put this here, the bits that weren't fitting. I just had to pop one of these off in the centre. The other one is at the bottom. I'm still yet to figure out if I've done this right, but it seems right to me. This, you know, it's not tall enough for me, but of course you just can't, you can't walk in and stand up in a tent most of the time. So, I'm gonna get this off here. Put it straight on like that, fits like a glove. And then, I was to pull all this out here, stretch all of this out, it's hard because it's not pegged in the ground, but you can see that that would be quite big enough with the two halves. When it's fully stretched out, I think that's definitely big enough for one person. I thought for some reason that it was going to be a two person tent with the two halves of the poncho, but looking one person and it definitely looks big enough. I think we're going to attach the two parts of the poncho together with the buttons and then chuck it on top of the pole. Do you know I can just feel it in the air. There might be some rain soon. I'm covered by a few trees but the quicker I can prop this up the better. I'm in England at the moment so it's typical of it to, to rain for a week and give you a day or two of sunshine. More like rain for a month. So anyone else will be able to do these buttons pretty fast. But like I say, I have issues with buttons for some reason. I'm just fiddling about. That's what it's looking like so far. It's about to get stitched together. I've just seen a cyclist up in the distance. I wonder if he can hear me. There is a few bike trails around me because of where I am. Oh, I'm getting it now. I must be getting it now. The camera's pretty far away as well. I'm thinking the next upgrade, I'm gonna get a mic. Because right now, you probably can't tell, but I'm having to show. I tell you, people around me probably hear me more than you. Whilst I'm here, I might as well say, you heard the reference earlier on, but the inspiration for getting this was Swedwoods. 
I haven't been watching him too long to be honest only a few months maybe six months max but the dude just goes some crazy locations amazing views every time and you know it's something I aspire to and then with the stealth camping I watched Steve Wallace he's a he's a mad lad he is he'll go anywhere and then for the, the general bushcraft channels I may link them all to my channel just so people can watch. I have got a playlist called Vids I Watch. I think it's about 100 videos deep now, but uh, there's loads of people on there, bushcraft wise, um, TA Outdoors, you know, they've got their Viking house build and all the Saxon house and stuff like that. Um, who I've, I've just been binge watching recently, Smooth Fixed Hour. <laughs> they're, uh, they're doing a Celtic house build at the moment, and that thing is just phenomenal. And the way they're doing it is so, I like it because it's, it's experimental, it's sketchy as well. <laughs> you know, they're climbing up 15, 20 foot in the air when it's pissing it down with rain and balancing on very slippy wood whilst trying to build at the same time. Quite impressive to be fair. And their survival challenges. Bring out another one. I know you said it's soon, but bring it out. The very first person who made me want to do all of this outdoor stuff was actually the Wooded Beardsman. He hit one mil recently, which is amazing because his motto used to be, I don't care if you subscribe. But yeah, I've, um, I've just been binge watching this stuff for absolutely ages now. Um, I'd say a couple years. And then it's been a few months since I've been doing it myself you know and when you get outdoors it's just it's chill you know no matter what you're doing you could be building away you could be exerting a lot of energy but at the same time you get the reward of what you're making or the reward of the view you're at you know the only bloody pesky thing is all the the midges and stuff but I recently bought a mozzie net which I could line the inside of this with it's just amazing, you can put it in any formation you want. I'm thinking as well, I said the people around me could hear me, but they probably can't hear me over the road. There's a lot of walking paths around here, dog walkers and cyclists and stuff like that. I'm not going to say where it is, because part of me wants to be selfie at the same time. Slowly, slowly. Now I've got to check my camera because if I don't check it every 12 minutes, it cuts out, deletes the footage for some reason. I've got a 128 gig SD card, but it doesn't matter. Oh, look at that. We've made it. We've made it, guys. We're on the last button. Guys and girls, I know there's a few watching. Woo, look at that, look at that foam. We're getting good at putting in now, it's only the first time. Oh. Right, so I can put the one inside the other. I don't know how it's going. <laughs> so I don't know if you can tell, but there's a pouch on this side, and there's a pouch on this side, which means I've just buttoned up the one side inside out so all that time I just spent doing it sweating I've done it wrong you can tell look at that that's, that's the outside <laughs> yeah so I'm gonna undo this now which will be faster but I've just got to do it again no you know I was wondering why the holes on the one side were so tight it's probably because they've never been used I'm gonna be back when it's done all right, so first thing I'm going to say is I've messed it up twice now. <laughs> I told you I wasn't good with buttons and I'm just <laughs> confusing myself. That's it. That's done. Now I'm going to stand it up and put the pole in there, put the camera back so you can get the full view. And um, I could have done this in about a minute, but it took me about 25 minutes. <laughs> wow, I'm just admiring my handiwork with the buttons. So, I don't know why I'm going to keep this up. 
whilst pinning these in the ground, you know, you could almost use a second person just to hold the blooming thing. I might just go for it. So the issue with my hands is, I think I just, fancy word for it, I think I just perforated the skin, um, the first few layers, like the epidermis, because I was like kneading clay with stones in it. I think that destroyed the top layers of my hands. And because of that, I've got two right gloves as well. I didn't pack right. <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, because of that, I couldn't get my hands wet for like two months. I only need one glove anyway. Just like that. One side, which I've done way too far. It's looking a bit better. So I decided to put it in a spot where there's a massive stone where I can't put the peg. So this is definitely a learning as I'm going process. So I've definitely put the front ones uh, not far enough. But yeah, I've just learned with the first two pegs that I won't need to put them in. I'm going to keep it open like a doorway because this whole thing stretches really far. So that's done. When I bring the camera around the front, you can see there's a bit of tweaking needed, but definitely taut enough to keep the rain off if it, if it was to come. There was even one spare peg. I was complaining there wasn't enough. There was one extra. Because the way that the front folds together, you'd button them up and then you'd put the peg through the hole in both of them because they'll overlap. Perfect. Let me bring you into my humble abode. Look at that. Obviously we got the tag here. That folds up. Ooh. Look at that. Yeah boy. Ah, that's perfect, you know? So it isn't stretched as taut as it could possibly be and if I was to do that it would be the perfect length for my whole body like just perfect if I need to cradle up a little bit that's fine as, fine as well no issue at all but I have just put my knee in a slug or something because I've got slime all over my knee now Whatever that was. <laughs> 
so now I've got this set up, I'm going to see if I can make a foldable chair whilst I've still got a bit of time. I've got like two hours uh, before sunlight starts going, I'll go back and get some dinner.